Technology Wins the Game by Mark Andrews. Almost everyone loves a good game. However, it's not just athletic ability or skill that helps sports players win. Many other things can contribute to a winning team or player. One of those things is the use of technology. Technology has made our lives easier and better in many ways. In sports, technology can help all types of athletes perform better. It's all in the design. If you like sports and science, being a sports engineer might be the job for you. Sports engineers are scientists who make sports more fun to play and to watch. They design better materials, surfaces, and equipment. They help keep athletes safe from injury. A sports engineer has probably helped improve your favorite sport. The Science of Sports Engineering Some sports engineers study the way athletes move when they play different sports. An engineer might watch a soccer player to see how the player's foot strikes the ball. This can lead to ideas about soccer shoes, the soccer ball, or even the soccer field. Engineers use these ideas to improve the game in some way. The first step for a sports engineer is to identify a problem in a sport, something to be improved. Almost anything can be improved. Then the sports engineer comes up with a possible solution. Next, he or she creates a model. The model may include a new kind of material. The new idea is then tested in a laboratory to see how well it works. Finally, the new product is tested by athletes. If it works well, soon athletes around the world will start to use it. So it goes from problem to idea for solution, create a model, and test. Changing the game. Let's take a look at tennis. This is a sport where sports engineers have made several changes. What a racket. Tennis rackets have changed a lot. When the sports began, tennis rackets were made out of wood. Then in the 1960s, a metal racket was developed. Metal rackets were stronger and lighter than wood. Today, rackets are made out of different materials mixed together. These rackets are very light and provide more power than the old ones. The ball moves faster than ever. Today's rackets also have a larger head or string area than before. This makes it easier for the tennis player to reach more balls. A player can also control the ball better and make it move in different ways. More bounce to the ball. Tennis balls have come a long way too. The first tennis balls were made of leather or cloth stuffed with wool or horsehair. These balls did not bounce very high. In the 1870s, rubber was first used to make tennis balls. These balls bounced better, but the cloth that covered the ball would fall off. Today, tennis balls are still made of rubber. First, two matching half-shell pieces of rubber are joined together. This makes the hollow, round shape of the ball. Second, two pieces of felt are wrapped around the ball. Third, a rubber seam is added to keep the felt covered together. Finally, the balls are put in a can that is under pressure. This helps keep them bouncy. The whole process ensures that each tennis ball bounces exactly the same way. Where the ball bounces is up to the player. Higher and faster. Sports engineers help athletes perform in just about every sport. Track and field athletes run, jump, and throw. Sports engineers help these athletes run faster, jump higher, and throw farther. They design new and better track and field equipment, services, and clothing. Jump higher. Have you ever watched a pole vaulter at the Olympics? A good pole vaulter must have speed, strength, and the right pole. The pole must be flexible and strong enough to bend and lift the vaulter over the bar. Poles used to be made of wood. They were very stiff and heavy. Later poles were made of more flexible bamboo. Then engineers designed poles made of aluminum. Today poles are made of fiberglass and are very light. They bend easily. The more the pole bends, the farther the vaulter sails through the air. Run faster. What makes a runner fast? Athletic ability and good training are most important. Engineers have designed new track services and clothing to help. Track runners used to run on grass fields. When it rained, the tracks would become soggy and slippery. Now most runners run on all-weather tracks. These are man-made services with a top coating of rubber chips. The rubber chips make the runner's shoes bounce off the track better. This increases speed. New kinds of clothing also help runners speed up. 
Many track stars don't wear shirts and shorts like they used to. They wear lightweight body suits that fit tightly. When they run in these suits, the wind does not slow them down. Every fraction of a second counts. A new kind of racing. The Boston Marathon is the oldest and most famous marathon race in the world. Each year, thousands of athletes run the 26.2-mile course through the hilly streets of Boston and neighboring towns. In 1975, Bob Hall finished the marathon in a different way. He wheeled his way to the finish line. Bob Hall was the first official wheelchair athlete to complete the Boston Marathon. He finished the race in less than three hours, faster than most runners. Today, wheelchair athletes compete with high-tech wheelchairs. Bob Hall used a simple wheelchair in the Boston Marathon. In these shoes, sports engineers have also designed shoes to make athletes faster and to give them more support. Athletes need different kinds of shoes for different sports. If you want to win, you need to wear the right shoes. A history of running shoes. In ancient times, runners ran barefoot. As time went on, athletes began to run in sandals. Soon the sandal wearers were winning most of the races. The running shoe was born. The next big change came in the 1830s in England. The first running shoe with a rubber sole was introduced. Rubber soles were light and comfortable. They also easily gripped the ground. Spikes were added to a running shoe as early as 1852. In the 1920s, a German named Addy Dazzler improved the design and sold the first modern running shoes with spikes. Spikes give runners a better grip. Today, shoemakers and engineers better understand the science of running. Running shoes are made for every style of runner and any surface. Engineers know that runners need shoes that are strong and flexible. Changes in running shoes. 5th century BC, ancient Greece, bare feet and sandals. 1830s, shoes with rubber soles for a better grip. 1850s, first use of spikes for running shoes. 1920s, modern spiked running shoes. 1972, extra cushioning in heels and soles. Extra bounce. Long jumpers need shoes that give the athletes extra bounce. The soles must be firm but able to bend. These shoes have metal spikes in the front of the shoes only. This helps the jumper grip the ground and spring from the toes right before the jump. Quick movement. Soccer shoes have plastic or metal cleats or rounded spikes on the bottom. Cleats help soccer players from slipping in the dirt, grass, and mud. Soccer players need to change direction quickly. Without cleats, soccer would be a slower, sloppier game. Play safely. Athletes also need special equipment and clothing to protect them from injury. Sports can be dangerous and professional athletes often take risks. Football helmets. Over a hundred years ago, football players did not wear helmets. Ouch! Then in the 1900s, players began to wear leather helmets. These early helmets did not provide much comfort or protection. Changes were needed. First, more padding was added. Second, a face mask was added to protect the nose and teeth. Also, the top of the helmet was made more round. This allowed a blow to slide off the helmet rather than strike head on. Next, in 1939, the first plastic helmet was invented. Today's football helmets are made of a special plastic that is light and strong. The helmet design protects players from head injuries. Some football helmets are being tested with a tiny computer chip inside them. If a player hits his head, the chip sends a message to the computer. Scientists hope that these chips could tell coaches when a player needs medical help. Other safety features. Some ski clothes are made to help skiers in trouble. Sometimes backcountry skiers get lost or are injured miles away from anyone. Sports engineers develop special sensors for their clothing. The sensors send information about a skier's location. A rescue team receives the information, which helps the team find skiers who have fallen or are buried under the snow. Brightly colored jackets and vests called reflective wear make bicyclists easier to see in the dark. Just for fun, the next time you play your favorite sport, think about some of the equipment you use. Think about the kind of surface on which you are standing, running, or jumping. Notice how your sports shoes look or feel and help you perform. Now that you have read about sports engineering, you can think about how technology has helped to improve your sport. Technology not only makes our lives easier and better, it also makes our lives a lot more fun.